The dim light of the old room flickered, casting a gentle glow on the faded photographs lining the walls. Amina, her eyes puffy and red, clasped her little brother Ahmed's hand as they stared at the frail, lifeless form of their grandmother on the bed. I'm not ready to say goodbye, Amina, Ahmed whispered, his voice breaking in the sterile stillness of the room. Amina squeezed his hand, her own tears carving paths down her cheeks. None of us are, Ahmed, but she's at peace now. A hollow silence enveloped the room, punctuated only by soft sobs and the distant sounds of Cairo outside the window. Memories of the grandmother, their city enveloped them like a warm, familiar blanket, providing a stark contrast to the cold reality they now faced. You kids don't have to worry about a thing. City will always look after you, echoed a memory in Amina's mind. Her grandmother, ever sturdy, ever protective, had been a constant after their mother Hana had abandoned them years ago. In another part of Cairo, an equally distraught woman, with streaks of gray in her unkempt hair, stared at a worn photograph of two children, unable to stem her own torrent of tears. Several weeks later, Amina, now an embodiment of strength molded by loss and responsibility, managed to juggle multiple jobs, from waitressing at a local cafe to working night shifts at a call center. She and Ahmed, finding solace in each other's silent understanding, moved to a smaller, more affordable apartment. As Amina sat down after a long day of work, Ahmed, diligently doing his homework beside her, glanced up. Amina, do you think Mama knows about City? Amina hesitated before answering. I don't know, Ahmed, but it doesn't matter. We have each other, and that's enough. But what if she comes back? What if she wants to be with us again? Ahmed's voice held a quiver of both fear and curiosity. Look at me, Ahmed. Amina spoke gently, her gaze firm. We've made it this far because of City, and because we stuck together. If Mama ever comes back, we deal with it together, okay? Ahmed nodded slowly, finding reassurance in his sister's steadfastness. Months rolled by, turning into years. Amina and Ahmed, bound by a silent pact to make their grandmother proud, created a semblance of normalcy amidst the chaotic hustle of the city around them. They built a life, humble yet sturdy, on the foundation of love and mutual respect, always remembering their grandmother's sacrifices. One day, after returning from his university, Ahmed confronted Amina. You've sacrificed so much for us, Amina. I wish you'd think about yourself sometimes. Amina, usually composed, allowed a sad smile. Ahmed, every sacrifice, every struggle was worth it to see you grow into the man you've become. But what about your dreams, Amina? Ahmed pressed. You always wanted to pursue your studies. To become someone, Amina placed a calming hand on Ahmed's shoulder. I am someone. I'm your sister. And you're becoming an incredible man, Ahmed. That means everything to me. Our past, our struggles, they don't define us. We define ourselves. The rhythmic humming of the old refrigerator was the only sound in Amina and Ahmed's modest Cairo apartment, providing a mundane yet comforting backdrop to their ordinary evening. Suddenly, a hesitant knock at the door punctuated the tranquility. Amina's eyes flickered with an unrecognized premonition as she approached the door. Ahmed, with furrowed brows, asked, Who could it be at this hour, Amina? As Amina cautiously opened the door, a gaunt, defeated-looking woman stood before them. Her eyes, once vibrant and full of unfulfilled promises, now mirrored a well of desolation. It was Hana. An awkward, pained silence lingered before Hana, her voice barely above a whisper, managed to speak. Amina. Ahmed. I... Amina's heartbeat echoed in her ears, yet she stood stoic, her expression unreadable. Ahmed, slightly behind, peered around his sister, eyes wide with a mix of curiosity and disbelief. I know I have no right, Hana continued, desperation lining her every word, but I need you to hear me out. In spite of the turmoil churning inside her, Amina stepped aside, allowing Hana to enter her eyes never leaving the broken figure of the woman who had once been her world. Hana, hesitating for a moment, stepped inside and began her story. I was alone, just like I left you. He divorced me and my other children. They disowned me for the same reason you should. Ahmed, unable to contain his bitterness, interjected. Why should we care, Hana? After all these years, why now? 
Hana, tears streaming down her cheeks, responded, Because I'm your mother, and I've lost everything. Amina, with eyes welling up but voice steady, spoke. Being a mother is more than just a title, Hana. It's a role, a responsibility, a constant presence. You chose to give that up. Hana, wringing her hands, tried to approach Amina. I made a mistake. I was foolish, blinded by my own misery and selfishness. But standing here, seeing the beautiful, strong woman you've become, and Ahmed, how you've grown. I'm so sorry for all the pain I've caused. Amina, avoiding Hana's outstretched arms, maintained her composure. Sorry doesn't change the past. It doesn't erase the nights we cried for you, the days we longed for our mother to care for us, to love us. Hana collapsed onto a chair, sobs racking her frail body. You have every right to turn me away, to shut the door on me just like I did to you. But life, life has broken me, just like I broke you. Ahmed, softening slightly, spoke up. We were broken, Hana, but we fixed each other. Amina became the mother you never were, and we learned to be a family without you. Hana, looking up, her eyes seeking any glimmer of forgiveness, whispered, I never wanted forgiveness. I don't deserve it. I just wanted you to know, to understand why I am here, shattered in front of you. Amina approached Hana, bending down to meet her tear-stained eyes. Hana, we learned to live without a mother a long time ago, and while I can't find it within myself to forgive you, I hope you find the peace you're looking for. Hana, standing unsteadily, gazed at them, a melancholic smile tugging at her lips. You both have become everything I could never be. I am so truly sorry for the pain I caused, and I am proud of what you've become despite it. With that, Amina escorted Hana to the door, the click of the closing latch echoing a definitive end to a chapter that had lingered open for far too long. Ahmed, gently placing a hand on Amina's shoulder, whispered, Are we going to be okay? Amina, staring at the closed door, responded with quiet determination. We always were, Ahmed. We always were. Under the scorching sun of Cairo, Amina strolled through the busy marketplace, her attention casually dancing from one stall to the next, her thoughts wandering to the recent business deal she had sealed. Ahmed, now sixteen and brilliantly adept at his studies, was busy preparing for his entrance exams. Amina could hardly contain the pride she felt for him, Yet it was in these moments, the normalcy of daily life, where the echoes of their mother's pleas haunted her. Ahmed's voice broke her contemplation. Amina, don't you think we could buy some fresh olives? Amina nodded, smiling down at her brother. Sure, they'd be good with dinner tonight. As they approached the olive stand, Ahmed's gaze locked onto a pair of young, hollow eyes across the market square. A shabbily dressed girl, perhaps no older than twelve, with hair the same shade as their mother's, scanned the ground for fallen produce. A younger boy, frail and sunburnt, clung to her side. Ahmed nudged Amina gently, whispering, They look like her, don't they? Amina's heart tightened as she saw the siblings, their desperation mirroring her own childhood struggles. She approached them, kneeling to meet their eye level, her voice soft and warm. Hi, what are your names? The girl, eyes flooded with suspicion and defiance, replied, why do you care? Amina, understanding the resilience masked as aggression, responded gently. You remind me of someone I used to know. My name's Amina, and this is Ahmed. The boy, curiosity overcoming his wariness, piped up. I'm Yusuf, and this is my sister Layla. The name stabbed at Amina's chest with a familiarity that was painful, yet expectant. Ahmed, perceptive and caring, crouched beside her, addressing the youngsters. We don't mean any harm. It's just that you two remind us of our family. Layla, her eyes softening a fraction, replied, Our mom's name was Hana. She left us. The air grew heavy, filled with unspoken pain and recognition. Amina, gathering herself, spoke tenderly. We know Hana. She's our mother, too. The revelation hung between them, tangibly connecting the four individuals with threads of abandonment and shared sorrow. Layla, tears pooling in her eyes, whispered. Why does she leave everyone she's supposed to love? Amina, choking back her own emotions, reached out, gently brushing a tear from Layla's cheek. Some people are so broken inside, they scatter their pieces wherever they go, hoping to somehow feel whole again. But it's never the children's fault, Layla. 
Ahmed, his voice steady and compassionate, added, Sometimes we have to find our own way, build our own families from the friends and loved ones who stick by us. Yusuf, naive yet perceptively pointed, asked, Are we family too then? The question hung heavily in the warm Cairo air, as Amina wrestled with the weight of responsibility and the remnants of her own shattered childhood. Being family is more than sharing blood, Yusuf. It's about caring, being there for each other. Layla, Yusuf, you both deserve so much more than what you've been given. Layla, her walls crumbling, admitted, We've been surviving, but it's hard. We have nowhere to go and no one cares. Ahmed, his hand finding Layla's, reassured her. We care. We've been where you are. And it's a lonely place to be. Amina, decisively, offered a smile, tinged with sadness and understanding. Ahmed and I, we've created a home, a place of safety and love, despite the pain Hana caused us. We can't erase your hurt, but if you ever need someone, if you ever feel lost or alone, we're here. Layla and Yusuf, children forced to face the harshness of the world far too soon, nodded, finding solace, if but momentarily, in the genuine empathy extended by their half-siblings. Amina's hands trembled slightly as she held the parchment, its edges slightly frayed, a tangible manifestation of its sender's emotional and physical state. Ahmed, noticing the familiar yet jarring handwriting, placed a gentle hand on his sister's shoulder, his voice a soothing balm amidst the rising turmoil within her. Is it from her? His question, though veiled with a nonchalant tone, revealed the undercurrent of emotional tumult lurking beneath. Amina, her voice barely above a whisper, affirmed, Yes, it's from Hana. She carefully unfolded the paper, words scribbled in desperate, chaotic strokes, a far cry from the methodical and controlled script she had witnessed in old letters hidden in her grandmother's keepsakes. Hana's letter spilled with lamentations of regret, narratives of her own sufferings, and pleas, deeply drenched in desperation, for reconciliation and forgiveness. As she read aloud, her voice held steady, betraying none of the chaos storming within her. Ahmed listened, his face a stoic mask, yet his hands, clenched tightly at his sides, revealed the resurfacing wounds of childhood abandonments and shattered maternal expectations. When Amina's voice trailed off at the final pleading sentence, silence enveloped the room, shattered only by the distant hum of Cairo's nocturnal life beyond the windows of their cozy, modest apartment. Ahmed, after a moment that seemed an eternity, spoke, his words deliberate and measured. We owe her nothing, Amina. Her pain, her regrets. They were choices she made, paths she willingly walked. Amina, staring at the now silent paper, murmured in agreement, Yes, Ahmed. Choices that robbed us of a mother's love. Choices that force children into roles not meant for them. But, Ahmed continued, We chose differently, didn't we? We chose to rise from the ashes she left us in, to weave our own tapestry, one of love, strength, and togetherness. Isn't that what City always told us? To find light, even in the darkest of tunnels? A flashback whisked Amina back to the cozy kitchen of their childhood, the smell of freshly baked flatbread lingering in the air, and the gentle voice of their grandmother, their beloved City, whispering timeless wisdom. My darlings, City had murmured, enveloping a young Amina and Ahmed in a warm, secure embrace. Life will often present you with difficult paths, and people will disappoint you, even those whom you love dearly. But remember, the true measure of your character lies in how you choose to stitch the tears in the canvas of your life. Will you weave it with threads of bitterness, or will you choose strands of love, empathy, and resilience? Amina's voice, pulling Ahmed back from their shared memory, was calm, an embodiment of serene resolve. Our threads, Ahmed, are spun from the love and lessons City bestowed upon us, not from the fragments of Hana's broken promises. Ahmed, moving closer, softly declared, Then let her keep her pain and regrets, Amina. We have our own tapestry to weave, one that will tell tales of triumph over despair, of love prevailing amidst abandonment. Amina, placing the letter on the table, her eyes mirroring her brother's resolute gaze, agreed. Our tapestry will be our legacy, Ahmed, one that honors City's memory and shields us from becoming prisoners of our painful past. The siblings, fortified by the unwavering bond between them, embraced, 
the sorrows of yesteryears, and the echoes of Hana's desperate pleas enveloped by the resilient threads of the tapestry they chose to weave. Their lives, unfolding before them, would not be tainted by the bitterness of vengeance, nor stifled by the chains of unrelenting hatred. One day, as the sun set, casting a warm golden hue over the bustling streets of Cairo Amina, her thoughts meandering through the myriad pathways of her memories, spoke. Ahmed, do you ever think of Yusef and Layla, the shadows of their pain and abandonment that mirror our own past? Ahmed, pausing, his eyes reflecting the complexities of emotions coursing through him, nodded. Every day, Amina, I see us in their eyes, the silent plea for salvation, for a sanctuary amidst their storm. Amina, her voice a gentle whisper, confessed. I see them too, Ahmed, in every corner of our triumphs, a constant reminder of the pain we once knew, of the sanctuary we wished for. So they stepped out of the comforting cocoon of the world they'd built, venturing into the known yet unfamiliar terrain of Yusef and Layla's world, extending hands not of pity, but of understanding, of shared pain, and of an unspoken promise of sanctuary. The day they stood at Yusef and Layla's doorstep, the children, their eyes gleaming with a mixture of apprehension and faint glimmers of hope, Amina spoke, her voice unwavering. We are not here to mirror the promises once broken by Hana. We stand before you as reflections of your pain, as embodiments of the possibility of triumph over despair. Ahmed, stepping forward, added, We offer not just a home, but a promise. A promise to stand by you as pillars, not to shield you from the storms, but to navigate through them together, as a mosaic of broken, yet resilient pieces, forming a formidable whole. Tears, glistening in Yusef and Layla's eyes, reflected not just the pain of their fractured past, but also the hesitant hope of a future, a future where they too could weave their threads into the tapestry of love, resilience, and unwavering support.